Is the Fuliex 8 still the best Fuliex model to get? It might have lost its crown. Today we're checking this out. Alright, so this year the Fuliex 8 model is available in two options. The XT, which is this one here with the Shimano X DRXT setup, or a SRAM GX one which I think is cool that they offer these two choices. A lot of people might not care, but some people are very particular about what they want. Price-wise, they're the exact same price, so that's kind of nice. Per spec-wise, apart from those two things, they're identical. So the Shimano Dior system is really nice, looks clean, and it does come with a big range to it. The new SRAM stuff is also that new big range one with a big 52 on it. The XT setup is really nice in the shifting. I do like that they have a bit of a textured feel here to it. Just is a little nicer than what the GX smooth kind of plastic shifter. Putting this piece of rubber on here is really nice. Grips wise, they're just that standard Von Traeger setup. They work really well, single sided lock on. Brakes there, the same Shimano four piston, MT420 I believe it is. Work really well, they stock really well. It's a little shame that they don't have some sort of matchmaker system. I like it cleaned up. I know a lot of people like the adjustability to move them a little bit further or apart from each other, but it's not like the handlebar is cluttered anyway. This is their aluminum frame, so it's nice, fairly well lightweight, um, and a little slimmer looking than the carbon alternatives. Um, aluminum can be manufactured stronger in a small amount, so it looks like a small bike. It, it's cool looking. The paint schemes on them are all fantastic. I can't remember which way it is, but either the XT only comes in one color and the GX comes in two, I think, or it might be the other way around, but I'm pretty sure I'm right there. Tire-wise, they are coming fully tubeless setup this year, which is cool. No tubes included with a 2.6 on the front and a 2.4 on the back. Kind of back to the old days, how they used to be. Everything kind of opposite makes for it really high traction front end and a faster rolling rear end. The brakes are fantastic. The 12 speed shifting is fantastic. The front fork is really good. There's nothing wrong with it. It's the Fox 34 on this one. Yeah, just checking. It's the Fox 34 on this one with the Fox rhythm at the back. And 140 mil, 130 mil. It's a very, well packaged bike you can't really go wrong with it Part spec wise it's amazing comes with aluminum wheels could be upgraded to drop a pound pound and a half if you go to a carbon wheels in the future or even just a nice high-end aluminum set which a lot more brands are starting to come out with von Traeger, i don't think has came out with like a high-end aluminum set but it's starting to come into the market now that carbon isn't king and that you might be able to get a really nice weight saving set of aluminum ones from other brands. They do have the flip chip technology in this one so it is really easy to switch between kind of an enduro bike or an XC bike and it's noticeable if you haven't played with these flip chips it's well worth it to climb the mountain, flip it and then come down. It makes a world of a difference. The Fuel X is everyone's bike. If you live somewhere where you don't know what you're going to get into, this is kind of the bike you want to go for. If you have a long commute on gravel or fast flowy single track, this will do it. But it'll also handle that super rough downhill stuff very, very well. You know, it's not going to handle the downhill as fast as a slash would, and it's not going to do it as quick as other bikes, but it's still really good. If you went to a downhill park, set it up in the low setting, you'll have no issues there. The 29 inch wheels are available from size small up, and then small and extra small are also available in 27 and a half. The extra small is only available in the 27 and a half. So again, with the Fuel the X, it's not the top fuel, it's not their race bike, it is designed as an everything bike. Yes, the 29s are the fastest, but that's not what it's always about. Sometimes it's just about comfort and overall rider enjoyment as opposed to just being the fastest bike out there. And especially if you're not comfy, you might not be fast in it. This bike is really designed for everyone and you can't go wrong with it. 
If you are coming off your first high-end hardtail, whether it be like a, a Roscoe or something like that, this is a great step to it. You might end at this bike and never want to go up from here. Everything about it is nice. Although it's an aluminum frame, it's still fairly stiff and responsive. Obviously aluminum at the bottom bracket kind of set up, you do get that flex and sway. Most people will never notice it until you jump up to the carbon bikes and then you can feel it. But otherwise it's an amazing bike setup. There is worthwhile doing a few tweaks if you wanted. You could put that Fox 36 or 38 on there if you wanted. The 38 would be pretty beefy, but if you're doing more downhill aggressive stuff, it might be well worth it. The downside to that is that aluminum frame weight may kind of make it overall a heavy bike. It's not like you've got the carbon where you've cut a couple pounds off and now you're adding it. So unless you're doing a lot of part changes or putting carbon wheels, new fork, it might not be the most upgradable bike. Drivetrains are always worth it, but other parts might not make sense with those aluminum frame setups. You might be better off looking at the 9.7 or higher. Bontrager components all around and overall, everything seems to work really well. The dropper post is the newest uh, Bontrager setup, so it is nice and stiff. It doesn't wiggle around like it used to. It's fast reacting. Comes with the Abarda seat. Same with pretty much every mountain bike now from Trek. And it's just nice that they actually thought about putting the XT or SRAM on there. This year though, you might not get a choice. I just take whatever you can grab. You can always change it down the road. Eventually your chain sets are all gonna wear. So as you replace them, you could switch them out to the Shimano or SRAM, whichever suits you best. Definitely this bike could be an excellent entry level bike for anyone who's just starting in the game. It's a lot of bike but you might never need to upgrade from there. If it's someone who's on a five plus year old bike, this is a huge upgrade, has all the technologies and checks the boxes of all the upgrades, you know, everything they've done over the past five to 10 years in one package. If you're in something like a Fuli X5 or that entry level full suspension, although the Fuli X8 would be a huge upgrade to you, it might be worth looking at the entry level carbons as they seem to be keeping on coming down in price. They're not necessarily coming down in price, but they're not going up as much as these ones. The power specs on these keep going up and up. The costs go up and up with it. Whereas the carbon technologies are so well dialed now, the power specs were always really high end on them. And now they're kind of coming down and down. So you're able to get a really good carbon option for a similar price to this. For a thousand dollars ish more, you can upgrade fork and carbon frame and that might be worthwhile to a lot of people. Definitely check out that. Anyway, hopefully this quick review video will help someone out there. Comment below if you already own this bike or if you were thinking about getting it or if you've got your order placed, how long of a wait is it gonna be? Come down and check them out if you need. Otherwise, good luck guys.